Hello and welcome to the Learning Square. In this series of tutorials, I will look into the digital image processing theory part as well as the applications using MATLAB. So images, we know that they are virtually everywhere. Our brain has the ability to recognize objects, people within seconds, but to be able to make a computer do the similar thing is really tough. So essentially, we look at digital images as a function fxy, where xy is the pixel value at a particular location. So we can see here, if you look at this image, it's actually you have intensity values of all these pixels given here, where x is the coordinate in the x direction, y is the coordinate in the y direction here. And each and every pixel is modeled as an intensity value fxy, which we are able to show as a gray level image over here. So if this is an 8-bit pixel image, then I would have 0 to 255 intensity values for each and every pixel, which could be depicted here. And we visually are able to see a digital image. Let's see how this is done in MATLAB. So essentially, I will first just read an image, which is using im read command. I can see this image. You can see it's displayed here. And then I have a command called im pixel info, which shows me the intensity values. So you can see x, y and intensity values given for each and every pixel. x increases in this direction, y increases in this direction and the intensity value for the pixel that we are browsing in is shown here. Now to be able to understand how images are formed, we need to understand three terms, the reflectance, the transmittance and the illumination. So illumination is the amount of light coming from the source. The source could be sun for natural scenes, it could be a tube light, it could be a bulb or whatever we are using for illumination. Yeah, so this is the object in question. Once some energy is incident on this, a part of energy is reflected and a part is transmitted. So transmissance is the fraction of that is transmitted into the material, whereas reflected is reflectance is the fraction of incident light which is reflected from that particular image. And this reflectance is now captured by the imaging system, which could be a digital camera, it could be a pinhole camera or any other imaging system. Now, actually what we get is an uh, analog signal from this imaging system which can be modeled as the product of illumination and the reflectance. And then using sampling and quantization, we are able to digitize this image, which we will see in the next uh, lecture. The sources of images could be many. We have an electromagnetic energy spectrum. We, have, we could have an acoustic source. We could have an ultrasonic, electronic source. We could also have synthetic images, which are produced by the computer. Now looking at the EM energy spectrum, we know that we are able to see in the visible range of the energy spectrum, but there are other bands which are available for imaging. Now every object has an image in each and every band of the electromagnetic spectrum. So if I'm able to see a person in the visible range, I know if I visualize the same person in the ultraviolet, I will have a different kind of an image. X-rays we have generally seen for people. So we know that X-rays are generally for the bones visualization of a person. We could have the same person visualized in the gamma, it would be a different image. Every object if visualized in each band will represent a certain spectral output based on its constituents. All objects generally have a distinct spectral signature which can be obtained by visualizing the object in all the spectral regions possible. So if I am able to visualize, so suppose I am looking at water, I know it uh, visibly how it looks like, I could similarly take the spectral output of the wa water in each and every electromagnetic spectrum and I could then plot as to what is this output I would get for water in all these spectral ranges. This principle helps us in using satellite images for land use classification, cloud detection, etc. Now suppose I want to find out the road in an image which is acquired using satellite images. I know that bituminous is used for constructing roads generally. I could then try to find out the spectral signature of bituminous and wherever I'm getting reflectance of bituminous in all the imaging bands, I could then identify and trace the road. So similarly, I have the spectral signatures for all these uh, earth features. So I know that snow and ice show such a spectral signature. My dry soil could have such a spectral signature. Clear water has this kind of a spectral signature. And if I have something, if I have an unclassified image, I could then use these spectral signatures to be able to identify the land use of the image in question. Now what is digital image processing? So essentially earlier we used to think that you know whenever there's an input is an image and output is an image, then it is essentially image processing. Everything else used to come under computer vision. But nowadays it's like more or less a similar term. 
So the low level processing is wherein we just pre-process the image for noise removal, sharpen it for better viewing for our purpose. Then the middle level process would be wherein I have an image and I'm able to give the attributes. So suppose I have a fruit plate in which I'm getting images of various fruits and I'm able to recognize that, okay, this, uh, this particular fruit is an apple, this is an orange or whatever. I'm able to do that. And I'm also able to segment the image into various sub parts. Then that is called the middle level processing. A high level process would have attributes as an input but my output would be understanding. So I'm able to understand a scene, I'm able to detect some, maybe I'm trying to do an automatic detection of fire, I'm able to identify people using biometrics or a fingerprint identification, these or a signature identification, these all would come under the high level processing. Now there are various uses of image processing. Now gamma ray imaging is used in nuclear medicine and astronomical observations, X-rays we already know. Then ultraviolet, it has op uh, lots of applications in astronomical observations, biological imaging. Then visible and infrared bands are used in astronomy, remote sensing, etc. Microwave bands are used in radars, wherein then you have radio bands, etc. So we will not get into the details of all this. So you could see there are various industrial applications wherein I'm able to automatically detect where there are bubbles present, where the liquid is not up to a particular height, so it will be discarded. Then PCB inspection is done because this is very difficult to see by the eye, so we could have automatic PCB inspections using imaging. Then we could identify the number plate of a, per of a speeding car, automatically be able to un identify the person who's speeding, fingerprint recognition, etc. Now the key stages in image processing are that we first need to be able to acquire an image. So we have seen that we use an imaging system to be able to acquire it. Then we do enhancements. So depending on the image that I have required, I may have certain noise present. I may, it may be, so this is basically a very dull kind of an image. I need to brighten it up. So there are various image enhancing algorithms which we will study. Then restoration is there. So I may have certain noise which is present. So the noises could be Gaussian in nature. They could be salt and paper noises. So there could be various sources of noises which we, and we will study filters to be able to remove those noises. Then we do certain morphological processes. So they are basically morphological is more of a cleaning process wherein we are trying to get skeletons out of the image. We are trying to find out which are the ridges, which are the contours, which we will see in details for this. Segmentation is we are trying to separate these images. So I may have images which are overlapping. I will study histograms to be able to segment it into different images, different parts. Then I'm able to recognize. So I will try to do certain machine learning to be able to identify the object, recognize it. There are parts of image analysis wherein I'm able to identify the boundary, represent it as a chain code or whatever. There are other parts which are image compression which are not typically a part of an imaging system but, but they are a part of image processing only but it is not always required in a typical imaging process and colored image processing is another field which we will look at. So this brings us to the end of this lecture. I will see you in the next one. Thank you.